Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid-Michigan. And today is a beautiful day despite the fact that we still haven't had any rain. There is some hope for it in the forecast though, perhaps within about a week. So I'm really crossing my fingers. Everybody do the rain dance for us here in Michigan. All right, well today we are going to do some planting and we're going to do some deadheading. So hopefully, um, this will be a fun day in the garden before it gets too hot out. So what we are going to plant out is some seedlings that I have that I still haven't gotten in the ground. So let's take a look. So we're not going to plant out everything in this tray today, but I do have some beautiful snapdragons here. And these, I believe, are the Potomac Orange variety, and they really need to get planted out. I'm definitely getting a little tired of watering them. And then back behind them, we have some Verbena bonariensis. And this one I just happened to luck out with because it kind of planted itself in one of my seed trays this year. And then I was able to take some cuttings of it and root them on, and so that's what these are. And we have, let's see, what else we have that I'm not going to get out today. We have some columbine in here along with some black-eyed Susan vines. Uh, they should be the pink variety. I have a small elephant ear back there that really needs to be potted up so it can actually grow. And then we have some hellebores with some volunteer petunias and some volunteer, it looks like, um, foxglove. So that's going to be fun to get those in the ground as well. And then we have more bunny tail grass here in this uh, particular container. So let's grab these snapdragons and we're going to head to the Potager garden. So here you can see we have quite a bit of empty space and that's because we have lettuce here that the groundhog came along and ate all of it. And it's getting too hot for me to really plant anymore because it will definitely bolt rather quickly. I am going to leave the stubs of lettuce in here in case it decides to grow back. Maybe I'll get a little bit, but um, let's get the snapdragons planted in and amongst here because I think that's going to add a really nice pop of color. And maybe I can even use them for cut flowers in a vase. That would be beautiful. Some of these actually have two or three seedlings in them. So I've been having to water them like every single day because they dry out. We continue to have what I would consider to be drought conditions here. It hasn't rained for, oh, a good month and a few days at this point. We have had fire watches, like don't light anything because things will burn in a heartbeat. Yeah, these are definitely gonna be root bound. I see the roots actually coming out the bottom of this pot. Not bad though. Not as bad as I thought they would be. So after we're done planting these, we'll definitely have to water them in. I don't know how many more crops I'm actually going to grow in the potager garden this year besides just the tomatoes. Right now I'm really kind of in the mood of not trying to fight off all of the animals that are eating my veggies and my fruits and those kind of things. So we'll see what the year has to come.
I don't know what that is. Let's pull this out. I think it's a parsley or a, could be a cilantro, something else that the animals ate. These can grow quite tall, up to like three feet tall. So I think these will be really beautiful and add some height in the garden if they actually do get to that full size. I do have some that are getting ready to bloom that are in pots on the deck and they look like they're going to be gorgeous. Like they're a really nice bright color. And this is a new variety. I have not grown Potomac orange before. And I definitely got a lot of them from my winter sowing this year. It's definitely an excellent winter sowing variety. It likes those that cold weather before it germinates. These aren't so root bound that I'm having to, you know, do anything to the roots. They're just actually perfect. But I think they will grow much better roots in this soil here. They'll probably thrive a lot more than they will in these teeny tiny pots. All right, let's get these watered in and we'll take a look at them. I think they look beautiful. So right now these guys are about six to maybe 12 inches tall. And some of them have one seedling in them and some of them have three. So it'll be interesting to see if they grow better as a solitary plant or as a group of seedlings. They all look really healthy right now, which is really great because they've been in those teeny tiny pots for several months now. And I'm sure they're gonna be super happy to be out here in the sunshine where they can extend their roots down into the soil and actually get some real nutrition because I have not been feeding them or anything either, which is partly why they are probably so small. All right, there they are. Aren't they beautiful? Back behind them, we have some ornamental oregano. That's the Kent Beauty, and it's actually getting ready to put on some of its own beautiful pink bracts and teeny tiny blooms that the pollinators adore but I think that will go also really, really well with these snapdragons. 
and I just planted them around some of these lettuces which you can see are starting to have a little bit of growth at the base so they might come back if not I would just let them kind of compost in place okay let's plant some verbena banariensis now over here is where we are going to be working today in and amongst around where this hydrangea is and you'll see there are some spots where we have a little bit of open space and so we're going to kind of fill that in with the Bravina bernariensis and these are seedlings probably from one that I planted in the past called meteor shower and it can also get quite high like two to three feet tall it is definitely only an annual here in our zone so um, after I plant it I will grow it on and then hope that it continues to reseed in my garden um, I don't get as much reseeding as some people do because I mulch every single year and so when you mulch over seeds it often prevents them from germinating which is also what makes it so that I really have hardly any weeding to do in my garden all right let's grab the plants and we'll show you where we're going to put them so we will put up a picture for you of what verbena bonariensis looks like uh, as the meteor shower variety and you can just see that these are so happy oh there's a bee flying right into the camera there sorry about that anyways these do shoot way up and they have a very nice airy feel to them so I'm really excited to kind of have these throughout this garden bed. They are purple. I think I'll set this one just to the side of the hydrangea. I don't want to block any of those beautiful hydrangea blooms that are coming. Put one right here to kind of fill in that gap. We'll put one back here and then I have another spot where I want to kind of fill in a gap over here so we'll put one back there and then finally we will put one right back here by the clematis and behind the hydrangea all right let's start right back here now we're planting this right in front of a sonic bloom Wygela. And this sonic bloom Wygela was a teeny tiny guy. He didn't come back very well over the winter. It was a clearance plant that I got. And um, due to being on clearance, it was because obviously it wasn't doing very well. It hadn't been watered properly at the nursery. And so um, it came back rather small, but my goodness, you guys, it has just been blooming its pants off and growing like crazy so I think it loves its spot and I'm so excited uh, to see it just getting bigger and bigger it seems like it almost grows and blooms more every day I'm just spotting a couple of the Canada thistles that kind of come through uh, from the neighbor's side. So whenever I see those, I definitely don't wait to pull them. I get them pulled right away. All right, now this right here, you might wonder what that is. That is a salvia and I just cut it back. Um, I had transplanted it just before the drought, so it did really poorly but I do believe it will actually come back and thrive. So I'm not gonna take it out, but I am gonna plant this verbena right in front of it. And it will grow much taller than that salvia. And if I don't get seedlings of this verbena coming back next year, that salvia is a perennial, so it will continue to come back. I was impressed at how quickly these verbena bernariensis cuttings rooted in water. 
So I would encourage anyone to try the same. It was very simple to do and I have very robust plants as a result of it. So that was very encouraging and I would definitely do it again. I mean, take a look at those roots, my goodness. The nice thing about these is they do not require a lot of water. I will, however, water them in just to make sure because I want them to do well and they will be facing west and so they get very much that hot afternoon sun. It's actually refreshing to see that after I did my sprinkling the other day that this garden bed does seem to have retained the moisture from it well. And as usual, before I water these plants, I'm making sure to empty the hose of the really hot water. I'm not worried about like watering at the base of these plants because they are not prone to pottery mildew or anything like that. Look at that hydrangea getting ready to put its blooms out. I can't wait. It would be so great to see that one bloom. Literally, if it blooms, it will be the first hydrangea that has ever come back in my garden to bloom the next year in terms of large leaf hydrangeas. All right, well, I think we got them all. And while you might not be able to see much of a difference right now, I think in a couple of weeks, we may see some blooms. I know the Burbina banariensis that I have in my little brick garden that is on the side of the house has some buds on it. So it's gonna be great to see these really fill in. All right, let's go do some deadheading on the April night salvia. Look, you guys, the daisies are beginning to open up. Okay, so this salvia right now is looking really good and healthy. It's nice and upright, but as you can see, we're getting to the ends of its blooms. Its blooms start at the base and they basically then grow all the way up to the top. And as they begin to fade, they fade from the bottom. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this back and I'll try to give you some close-ups as we do it so that you can kind of get an idea of how I choose to prune my salvia. So this is actually a new variety to me this year. I've grown lots and lots of different salvia, but all of it kind of have different growth habits slightly and different reblooming habits as well. So what I like to do is at this phase, come in and just look at the salvia really closely. I follow a flower all the way back down to the stem and I look to see if there are any new blooms that are starting to form. And you can kind of see in there some very, very teeny tiny ones blooming. Now, since they're so small, what I will do is I will clip this one back a little bit further than if they were further along. If they were quite far along and um, they were setting some nice buds for new blooms, I would just cut them back to that very first kind of node where you might see some new ones beginning to form. But I see them all along all of these different blooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them back quite a bit further. And um, that way it helps to keep them a much stronger plant in terms of the nice upright growth that we get. So I'm gonna come right down to the main stem down here. And I'm gonna start by clipping that back, which takes out a big bloom and opens up our ability to see the plant more. And then what I'll do is I'll clip each of the side shoots back. And that's gonna give this little tiny bloom right here. I don't know if you can even see it, but it's right in the center there, a chance to bud out and flower. So that's pretty much it. I'll show you uh, one more time on this one here. We clip out the middle stem and then I cut back a side stem to just above the flowering node. And uh, I might cut back a little further than that on some of the other ones, but that in general is the process. So let's get going and get that done. 
Now I'm setting the camera so that you can see me, but also so that you can see the little run house that is behind me because he may be chattering it at us as we as we do this uh, cutback. And um, yeah, I'm actually gonna take the stem back even further for most of these. That's gonna make the process even simpler because I won't have to do each one of the side stems. So I'm just going for the main stem. Anyways, for those of you who are bird watchers out there, you may prefer to watch the bird rather than me clipping back here. But once you get a bit of a rhythm to it, it's a pretty simple process and it's very relaxing and mindful. And I find it pretty enjoyable. I've gotten some comments from people who felt like they didn't have great success with salvia. And uh, salvia is one of those plants that um, if you have the right conditions, it's incredibly easy to grow. But if you have the plant in the wrong conditions, it's going to fight you quite a bit. And salvia just really does not need much love. It doesn't need much water. You can see how incredibly upright with such strong growth this one has despite the drought. They are incredibly drought tolerant. So don't try to water them because that will just cause issues. You do want to water them obviously when you first plant them and get them acclimated. But it doesn't take long for them to adapt. And I also kind of, for looks of the plant, will clip at different heights. And that way it doesn't look like I just came through and like butchered the plant. Um, so some of them I'll cut at side shoots and some of them I'll cut the main stems. That way, you know, it keeps plenty of foliage and uh, doesn't look like it's been completely hacked again. That's not a pretty look for any garden. But you can do it any way you want. I actually have sometimes, because of the looks of it, like maybe it was struggling along a little bit, I have come in and literally cut a plant all the way down to its basal foliage. And it grows back just fine. Usually I choose to do that on plants that look like they have a lot of bug damage or the foliage just doesn't look great and I want to get a nice new flush of foliage. But the foliage on this plant actually looks quite healthy. So I just want to, you know, clean this up and make sure we get some additional blooms. Now, rebloom on any plant is pretty much like the song, never, never as good as the first time. Um, but it definitely is enjoyable and it definitely keeps the color coming. So I find that this is well worth the effort. That one's just starting to open. And you will find on the plants that there will be different, different stages of bloom on different branches. So you wanna keep an eye out for that as well. And it may not be something that is easy the first time you do it, but the more that you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. If you need a deer resistant plant also, Salvia is really, really deer resistant. That's why I plant a lot of it in my front garden. It's actually in the mint family. So it has a very strong and pungent odor that keeps the deer from wanting to eat it.
So hopefully you can see what I mean by kind of keeping some of the bushy foliage and yet still trimming others back. Having the varied heights just kind of camouflages those cuts for you. All right, well, here's what the finished product looks like, and I think it looks really nice. You can see that um, it's opened up some of the space for the hydrangea behind it to kind of breathe, and that's a nice firelight hydrangea that we planted last fall, and I think it's gonna look really beautiful when that is blooming, and the salvia is putting on some blooms at the base of it. Won't that look pretty? Everything in this garden bed still looks just beautiful. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about pruning and taking care of salvia, some other plants that you might consider using in your garden for variety. But yeah, uh, thank you again, and we'll see you next time.